Via Twitter today, one of the Japanese accounts gave us our first perfect in-hand look at the Transformers Earthrise War for Cybertron Cybertronian Villains 2-pack of Skywarp and Thundercracker. And it gave us some new insights now that we actually have them in hand instead of like, let's say, Hasbro CG mock-ups or stuff like that. And they look really good. Uh, one of the biggest things to note is that despite the fact that they are, no surprise, repaints of the Starscream mold, they will have new head sculpts. And that seems to be always a uh, a new trend now. I know that they kind of started that with the masterpieces where each one of the different seekers of the original trio would have some kind of new face sculpt. And that stays true here. We have Starscream with a, a slightly more smirk. We have Skywarp with a yelling face. And we got... Thundercracker with a more kind of grim smile. And also what's interesting is that the individual that took photos in the photo shoot kind of showed the potential of how a conehead transformation could be done, I guess basing it on what we've seen in the past with both the Generation 1 mold and that of the classic slash Generations kind of mold back in the day. So this is really exciting. They look really good. And I mean, the only thing that I could really touch on here more than anything that's very much worthy of noting is that these are going to be target exclusives and the reason why i want to bring this up is because you know let's jump into transformer finance for a second and i i a lot of times on the podcast i would say you know certain figures you know you could just wait it out and prices will find its its base point and then everything will be okay sometimes even cheaper especially when you're talking if you're someone who doesn't mind buying loose uh complete as opposed to mint in package but when it comes to, like, let's say specifically Skywarp, um, he has a very complicated history when it comes to pricing. And it goes all the way back to, like, like the first time we really had, like, Seekers getting modernized molds was, like, the Robot Masters line, where Starscream got that new mold. And then they did Thundercracker and Skywarp, oddly enough, also in a two-pack. And it was an e-hobby exclusive. And that thing went for over 150 bucks back in the day, when it had, I think it was an original retail of, like, 90 in Japan. And now, obviously, you know, we're talking, man, it must be 15 years later now, no one cares about that Robot Masters 2-pack. But at one point, that was like the hottest way to get your modernized Skywarp. Then we're talking the Classics line. That was a Target exclusive 2-pack that came with Ultra Magnus, that Skywarp. And that thing at one point was even on clearance at Target. But as Classics really started to pick up, that Skywarp Ultra Magnus 2-pack you know, granted, it also had some influence from the city commander with that Ultra Magnus mold, but that two pack was going for insane money at some point. And again, getting that Skywarp mold was very important to people. And there was money to be made if you managed to get those. So it came, it went, and, you know, again, like everything, it starts to even out. It still kind of holds a value, that Skywarp one. The, obviously, the Ultra Magnus has plateaued since then. Uh, but the. Skywarp still kind of hold a value, but it, it never truly returned back to that original MSRP and definitely didn't return back to its clearance price that Target was running at one point with those two packs. Even something like Titanium Skywarp, which was based off of the Warf, uh, excuse me, War Within design. At that point, that was probably the only way you could get your Cybertronian designs was the War Within stuff long before War for Cybertron and Generation started doing Cybertronian designs. And the only way you could get your Tetrajet Skywarp was through War Within, but oddly enough, the Skywarp was a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, specifically 2008. And again, when it first came out, original MSRP was $25.99, I believe it was, and then it just jacked up to 50 but Titanium's was kind of a, a flash-in-the-pan kind of line, and that kind of stabilized, and now, I, I mean, you could pick it up for 30 20 today. No one cares about titaniums anymore, which is unfortunate. There was some fun stuff, but I do agree most of it was kind of meh. Um, titaniums is a whole other conversation. And even like uh, when it comes to Masterpiece, like when Skywarp had his Masterpiece release, both his Japanese version and even more specifically his American release of his Masterpiece, which was a Walmart exclusive, we're talking the first uh, Skywarp mold, uh, was difficult to get. People were scalping it was jumping up to amazing prices. Skywarp was always a headache, and it even affects us today with the Siege Skywarp. If you're trying to get your modern Tetrajet Skywarp now, his prices are still pretty high and pretty crazy. We talked about it afterwards with the seller's market on the Transformer Finance, and 
what I'm trying to get at here is this two pack. Um, if I was a speculator, um, this two pack is going to be money in the short term. Meaning, like if you picked up, and again, I I don't encourage scalping. I really don't. But I'm going to give my honest two cents here. Um, if you picked up a few of them, you're going to make money in the short term. It's something that if you held on to it for five years, not so much so because Hasbro has a tendency of revisiting characters and probably something's going to come around to replace these and make them not have a purpose anymore. Engineering will somehow get better like it always does. It's only up and up into the sky. But it's something that I feel that at least in the short term, if you get these two packs, there's going to be a huge demand for them. Compounded with the fact that they're Target exclusives, which makes them slightly more difficult for the rest of the world to get. Now, granted, usually Target exclusives end up in other locations. Case in point, Toys R Us will probably be the carrier of these here in Amer in uh, Canada. But the point is, is that there will be some kind of value here. People will have a, a need and demand for these. And considering that it's a two-pack, um, the value will be slightly higher. So that already closes the door on, on individuals who would buy it casually. And then it ended up in the secondary market. This will be a very um, concentrated and planned purchase. Much like, again, that Siege Skywarp two-pack. Well, not two-pack, three-pack, really, with the, uh, with the extra individuals. But the Battlemasters where that also kind of had a slightly higher MSRP, and as a result, people were buying it casually as if it was just a regular Voyager, and as a result, the market for it just exploded, at least temporarily. Now, same thing with that Siege Skywarp. As time progresses, it'll find a, a balance, and it'll flatten out. Prices always do flatten out over time, but sometimes that might take two years. Sometimes that might take three years. Sometimes it might only take six months. It really depends, but it does always flatten out over time because Hasbro will always revisit characters and then make whatever you bought before kind of irrelevant. Case in point, that's why I went over this list of valuable Skywarp toys throughout the years, because they were staples and valuable product, and then as time progressed, they kind of balanced out, and some of them returned to their original MSRP, if you're willing to buy Loose Complete. Some of them even just mint in box, like in the case of the SDCC Titanium Skywarp. But yeah, this is something, again... If you see it in stores, I wouldn't sleep on it. I wouldn't say, oh, I'll come back later or uh, I'll get it in another time. This is one that if you want to own it now, I heavily suggest when you see it, pick it up right away because people are going to take advantage of this. They're going to buy it in large numbers and then put it out in the secondary market to profit. It's just the way it is with this unfortunate fandom. And the sad thing is, is people pay it. You know, I always say that scalping doesn't happen if the other side of it doesn't pay it, too. If people just refused to pay, you know, that extra premium, sometimes double the value of the MSRP of the figure, then scalping wouldn't happen because scalpers wouldn't want to waste their money. They'd get stuck with product, and then that product takes space in their house, and then they end up losing money on it because they didn't make the money from it. And, you know, the whole process then collapses. But unfortunately, there's a lot of people with, with income that just don't mind paying double. I see it all the time. I, I follow transformer prices all the time. And I see crazy numbers with stuff and people are willing to pay it. Stuff that sometimes, you know, a pre-order was available for nine months for a masterpiece. And then when the pre-order's over and now stores don't have stock of it, all of a sudden the value of that masterpiece just jacks up completely and then people are willing to pay the premium of a 50 to $100 more even though they were sitting on a pre-order for 9 months and never decided to drop the money on it it happens the mass the, the the master class of procrastination and fomo in its greatest form right there so long story short keep an eye on this skywarp thundercracker cybertronian villains 2 pack from earthrise uh, because there's going to be some money here. There really will be. Uh, just basing on the history of this character, and slightly Sky uh, Thundercracker too, but more, more so Skywarp, and his history of just how this guy always somehow managed to make money for people that were speculating on him to make an extra buck.